Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. Merry Christmas. Today is the final day of the Advent Ornament Challenge. I am so proud of you guys for sticking with me and doing all this. Today we're going to do a way in a manger. So let's go ahead and get started. Colors you're going to want to begin with are the whole range of turquoises and teals. So I have mermaid tail teal up here, kind of for way up here at the top, and we'll just kind of brush that in right now. And then, oh, where's my offload? Hello, I'm being a big dork. Just grab some old random textbook and offload in that. Let's see, that's how we roll. Okay, and then let's see here, sorry. You know, I get all started and I'm all excited. I feel like I'm good to go and then I forget a detail. Then we'll grab some desert turquoise, kind of blend that right there into the mermaid tail. And right now it's looking a little stripy. I can just kind of scrub, scrub, scrub in between them. Then I'm going to offload that. I'm going to come in and grab some uh, Bahama Blue. I feel like I made the whole list of all the colors you're going to need or sort of started to and then maybe missed a few, so I apologize. I'm going to just kind of blend a little here. Even though that kind of lightens my other colors, I think it gives us a smoother transition there. And then, of course, offload, offload, offload. And you just want to offload till a majority of the pigment is off your brush, but you don't need to rinse. And then we'll grab some white and we'll just kind of blend, blend the base there. So we kind of start at the bottom and then work our way up. I think that does the trick. Mm, no, we want to go lower. Sorry, my bad. So I'll start a little lower here with a straight way. Of course, I've already got a little bit of that teal on my, on my brush or Bahama blue, whatever it is. So I realize blending, it's kind of a finesse thing. All right, offload, rinse. Actually, no, don't rinse. It's fine. Just take it after you've offloaded, grab some black, just the tips right there, kind of flatten it in. And we're going to scrub some black into this guy right here. There we go. And we're just going to create kind of that low horizon line. This is getting a little wiggly waggly, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I hope you guys all had a wonderful holiday or sort of in pause mode between crazy morning and then a fantastic meal. That's pretty much where I am. My kids are all up messing with their stuff. My youngest wanted me to teach her how to do cat eye makeup, which of course was kind of a mess because I'm no good at it. So I know I'm wearing uneven cat eye makeup. Like first I just did one eye and I was like, you know what? I'm going to feel like a fool walking around with just one eye done. So I did the other one and you know, they're totally not even. Right, so here's my up. Apparently my line's a little, a little cockeyed, a little crooked. It's fine. So offload that black and let's go ahead and rinse this big brush. We are done with the big brush and we have a beautiful blended sky. And the reason we did that is we wanted to look like the night sky, but one of the, the main colors that Mary and Joseph wear is royal blue. And if I've got royal blue on a navy blue or royal blue background, you can't see it. So we made the decision to tweak the background and the brain will forgive us. Okay, so grabbing your itty bitty skinny, skinny mini fine brush and the black, we're going to sketch this in. You can do this with pencil if you like. I'm just going to go straight for it because I've already drawn this like six times today. Because, you know, I needed to practice to make sure I had it right. So we're going to maybe start kind of right here at the center and we'll say that's our that's our roof, our roof peak. And I do kind of a couple of lines that go up and cross. So again, we're kind of doing a manger. I don't know. We're just kind of making it interesting and giving that sort of a hand built sort of look. And we're doing all of our sketching with black because in some ways these are um, that's where I'm like for we're going to have a lot of stuff in silhouette. And the black is a really good base that we can then kind of overlay other stuff on. So notice how I'm kind of curving the lines on either side. Like so. And if you are feeling like you want to add a little extra to that roof, you can. We could add like one more set of sort of crosses. I don't know. Most like that. Just makes it sort of interesting. And notice I'm getting sloppy. It's not. We don't need to be perfect. That's the beauty of this. Okay. So now let's do the... The actual, the actual bed. All right. So again, with black, I just draw kind of a line across the middle. 
and then kind of turning it into a half circle and then some sort of jung 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 right across the top there i'm gonna make give it some sticks kind of like a barbecue a barbecue pit I know it totally looks like one of those like barbecues. We're going to, we're going to cheat, tweak that. So it doesn't look like a barbecue, but if it starts off looking like a barbecue, that's okay. Hey, Angela. Oh, Merry Christmas. And you're welcome. I love sharing these videos and it's so much fun to paint with you guys. All right. So we're just going to kind of, it's something, right? It does not have to be perfect. We could thicken this part up if we like. Again, we're just sketching stuff in. We're getting the basics. All right. So now, we know there's going to be a baby there. We're going to, we're going to do a person and we're sort of like a, a little oval here. And then we're going to kind of just do a curve and a curve like so. Very, very simple. It is okay if your sketches look like a kindergartner did them. No big deal. Let's make this one a little taller. And then we'll kind of do, oops, well, okay, there we go. That's fine. It's a thing. Takes up the space. And then let's see, let's do a sheep here. So we're gonna do like a little triangle. And then maybe some little ears that come off it. Looks like a steer, but no biggie. Again, this all comes together and then we're just gonna kind of fluffy, 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 fluffy the body. Hey Holly, Merry Christmas. Are you at Mama John's today? Tell them Merry Christmas. Alrighty, some legs. So again, we are sketching with black paint. I promise you this will come together. All right, now let's do a camel. I like to do a camel. So we're gonna start with the head way up here, kind of nice and tall, right? His head is at least their height. And then we're gonna do like a dromedary hump. Can't remember if dromedaries and camels, I don't remember which is which, you know, one hump, two hump. I don't know how that all works. And then we'll kind of make a little bump out for his bummy. And Simon too, lots of puppy toys from, aww. I'm so glad your puppy got all, got all the loving. So now we're doing this kind of neck. And again, it's okay if your camel looks a little dumb. Mine looks dumb too. All right, so now here's a fun fact, or not a fun fact, but a little thing that makes it look more camel-like instead of something else. They kind of have knock knees, right? So we're gonna kind of do lines that sort of come in a little bit and do like little joints and then kind of have them come out. So then little lines that come in like so, and then they kind of come out. So if you give them that slightly knock knee look, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's a camel, because everybody, just kind of naturally get, I'm gonna give him a little tail that hangs down. And we'll just kind of darken that in. Try to keep it really thin coats here so that when you come back, it's dry. I'm hoping we don't have to break out the dryer. And then I think we need one more sheep. Let's throw in another sheep. So again, a little triangle right here, kind of upside down triangle, maybe some ears that kind of stick out, makes him look like a steer and then like a fluffy and then four, four little stupid stick legs. That's all you need, right? There we go. <laughs> hey, Cassie, Merry Christmas. Good afternoon. All right, so it's looking, a little, it's looking a little rough, right, guys? We're good with that. We're totally good with that. Okay, so now it's time to get into some color. I'm gonna go ahead and offload this black and rinse. Okay, whoops, a little bit more rinse. So again, with a skinny brush like this, you never like jam those bristles against the bottom. You wanna just swoosh it. And now it's time to grab some colors. So I'm gonna go with the raw umber or dark brown. Oh, that's right, and Holly did one of the gnome family paintings. She took the, exist the, the gnome pro project that we did and customized it for her family. All right, here we go. So grabbing the brown. And now we're literally just gonna kind of go over a lot of this. We'll, we'll do the camel later, but we'll get kind of the roof bits here. And if some of the black peeks through, great. Keep it loose. I mean, I like this project because it's kind of loose. It's kind of figurative in a way. Everybody's small enough that you don't have to be good with details. You see, I just kind of threw that in there. Oh, and then let's do some thatch on the roof. Thatch, 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 thatch. And it's just kind of almost like making the, <laughs> the roof look furry. And we are using brown for thatch for now, because again, we're gonna be building layers and then we'll kinda get some brown on the, the baby stand or the barbecue, whatever you'd like to call it. And then this guy, he's gonna be in a mostly a, a rusty red gown. So I'm gonna start with a brown base coat. And then this one here, which I wanna say is Mary, because Mary wears a blue gown usually with a red veil, right? If I, am I right? 
Oh, Cassie, you did the Nutcracker ornament. I can't wait to see. I will go look as soon as I get back online. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to see that. I bet it's beautiful. I hope you're really happy with it. Did you keep it pink or did you tweak the colors? And again, of course, I'll go look. But obviously, I can't go look right now. All right, so let's get some brown on Mr. Camel. I'll just kind of fill in kind of the under portions. He oh, shoot. I screwed up. I screwed up. I gave my camel a beard. We didn't want to give our camel a beard. There we go. So baby wipe because the, the bluish color was was um dry underneath. I was able to get away with that. It lifted a little bit of the black, but that's okay. All right, there we go. We'll kind of bring some of the brown kind of down his legs a little. Hit pink. It did take a while. You know, I'm, I'm half tempted to uh, try refilming that and see if we can go do it a little faster, a little, little less detail. I feel like maybe we went a little overboard on that guy. Oh, you know what these guys need? They need a little tiny tail sticking out too. And then, okay, so I kind of browned the camel, but not entirely. I'm going to just add some brown to the, while I'm here. I could use a bigger brush, but why? Oh, I got a lot of paint there, so I'm just going to smudge it with my fingers. Just adding some brown to this base, but just kind of streaky. So, again, it's still, you know, not the most exciting, but it's there. Okie dokie. So now go ahead and rinse. Time to step down to a new color. Here's one that we haven't really used before. It's raw sienna. So deco art's idea of a raw sienna is it's like a it's kind of like a light camp, like a dark camel brown. Oh shoot, let me mix it. Hold on. That came out fine earlier. It's actually quite a lovely color. It's not quite rusty. It's kind of a medium brown, but very, very warm. And that really separated, which is so weird. I guess the first little squeeze that came out earlier today was fine when I was messing and testing, but not so much the second bit. All right. And okay, I'll start a little bit down in the base here and just kind of getting little bits of this raw sienna kind of into the into the ground. I'm going to use the, where's my dryer? We need a dryer for this. All my stuff is wet. There we go. Okay, so Cassie says, she, the, okay, the ornament took almost as long as the big one. Tiny details looks much better in person. Oh, isn't it funny? Yeah, I, my, my nutcracker looks cool in photo, but it looks way better in person. I find it very, very difficult sometimes to photograph these things, especially when you have like a lot of glitter and a lot of like really tiny, tiny details. All right, let's see here. So we're going to kind of come and go over some of the eaves or whatever these are, the, the, the things on the, the roof. And, you know, in fact, Cassie, there's a whole art to like photographing art. It is not, it is not easy. It often takes, you know, good lighting, good angles, a lot of photo editing just to kind of tweak the exposure and whatnot. All right, and we're adding the little bits of, little bits of, what is that, thatch to the roof there. So again, coming together still looks a little rough, but no biggie. I'm gonna kind of come down, not fully covering, but just sort of also doing the, the strap, the, not the straps, the, the poles. And then we'll kind of come in, get a little bit on the, the manger and a little bit in the straw here, kind of jingle, 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 jingle. And we'll put the baby in, in a little while. Okay, now it's time for camp, it's camel time. And we're gonna do a bit down, kind of in the mid zone on his body. Eesh, stuff's not mixing up properly. Okay, kind of like so, and a little bit on his neck, a little bit down the fronts of his his forelegs. Maybe a little bit of brown on the lower portion of our of our sheep. You see how it's slowly coming together. Hey, this pigment is like all separating. I want a couple of like legs that stand out. Okay. So I'm adding a little bit of this lighter brown. It's almost a sable color. And it's raw sienna to the outfit. So since we're here, I'm just going to grab some red and do that. Where'd I put it? There it is. Way over there hiding. Okay. 
little tiny squeeze of red should be all we need because we just want to make this outfit here reddish and this is a little too bright for me I want it to be a bit like more muted so we'll mute that down make it a little bit more rusty a little bit more rustic and we'll do the veil kind of in the red let me think that that's so I'm thinking that this is Mary with a red veil and the blue gown, although I cannot remember. I always get confused. My art history is failing me a little bit right now. So that outfit there is pretty red. I'm, I'm going to want to take it down a notch, but it's fine. We got the basic kind of color in there. It's good. He's good. And go ahead and offload, rinse, all the good things. All right, let's put a little smidge of yellow on your palette. Probably only need the tiniest drop, right? Because we're working in really small, small space. Oh, say so Cassie says wood was also rough, making it harder to get smooth lines. Ooh, how frustrating. Okay, so we'll take some of that yellow. We're going to take a blop of the yellow over here. And then we'll bring the brown for that raw sienna and kind of mix a little bit more raw sienna. So we want to mix a warmer, almost like straw color, right? So it's toning the yellow. We're not really ever using any straight up yellow. We're trying to like just have a warmer straw color. Okay, I think that works. I think that works. Ooh, and this guy is super wet. So we're gonna dry first before we put our paint down. You know, it's funny, Cassie, like some of my ornaments are very, that's some very rough wood and it's super frustrating because you get all these weird bumps and it really does mess with you. And then some of mine are very, very smooth and it's totally not been an issue. So it's almost like you have to do like paint a, paint a layer and then sand it. And then that just becomes like this huge, I don't know, ordeal. All right. So let's take that kind of funky yellowy color and do, a, it's, it's still a brown and kind of do the top of the neck and a little down the head of the Mr. Camel here. So the other brown is there. We'll do, it's a really good color for the straw. We'll get some of that in there. Bunk, 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 bunk. Again, a lot of detail in this guy. I haven't quite got a solid beat on how to do the thatch right up there, but I think that's okay. We'll get away with it anyways. It's fine. I think I think what we're really trying to communicate is that little miracles happening down here, right in the center. All right, and then we're going to go do the straw here. And of course, the little bits of brown and everything underneath helps kind of pop it again maybe do a couple of little highlights on your the rest of your barbecue there i mean you know manger I swear i'm not being sacrilegious it just sometimes sometimes my drawings come out slightly different than i expected them okay maybe just a little touch of that brown down a foreleg just kind of a little highlight here and there to kind of leave the back leg alone you know, and then a couple of the highlights, just little bits in some of the, the rafters and the structure. Not too much. Just kind of keeps it interesting, keeps it from being completely flat. We want we want a sense of dimensionality. And by using layers of different colors, especially when you know the darker colors are kind of peeking out, and then we'll bring a little bit along the, the floor here. It's almost too much. So we'll grab some of that uh, raw sienna to just kind of blendy blend and kind of modulate. Uh, that was too much. So then grabbing a little bit of the brown. I don't know. I'm trying to get it to be like sort of interesting down here, not just a complete like black hole, a little bit of texture, but I don't want to draw the eye down too much. And I think I've draw, drew the eye down a little too much. So I'm coming back in with some darker brown to just kind of, I guess, modulate that. So that's good. Now we've got kind of a, yeah, we've got some texture and some color without it being excessive. You can even add a little bit of black back in if you want. Figure I'm not rinsing or anything. I'm just kind of dipping and grabbing. Oh yeah, you know what? I like that. A little bit of black kind of right at, right underneath each of these sections here. A little bit here, a little bit here. 
And never fear, we still have a lot of, a lot of stuff to do here. But this guy does come, whoop, this guy does come together relatively quickly. Yeah, Cassie, trying again with a slightly smoother surface might work. If you've got the bandwidth and energy, you know, if you're really feeling like, oh, I've got to get this exactly, you know, go for it. But, you know, if it looks cute enough as is, then keep it as is. You know what I mean? Okay. Now we need like an off-white. I don't want to go with full white. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this, uh, the raw sienna. All right here, grab a chunk of white. I got all this white and it's like way too much white, but that's okay. A little bit more white to it. So I'm trying to kind of create like a cream color. If you don't have the raw sienna, and 99% of you won't have the raw sienna, it's okay. You can totally, you know, use like, um, what's this one? Like buttermilk. Um, or you could do like a yellow, yellow brown mix or a little bit of orange and a little bit of brown. All right. So we're going to do some faces. This might make them just a little bit too white, but I don't think it really matters. We're not going for perfection here. We just want their little kind of, we want them to just sort of stand out a bit. I'm going to use that off white for the sheep. Just kind of dabbing it in. Dab, dab. Dab, 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 dab. And it's okay if it kind of gets that fluffy look and if some of the dark, you know, undertone sort of shows up too. And then we'll use some of that kind of on the top of the camel, on the top of his head, top of his neck, a little bit just on his neck, maybe even right there on his chest. I think it's looking a little bit more like a horse. Whatever, it's cool. So now we kind of have like our little camel over there. The sheep, I'm going to grab a little bit of my dark brown. My, was it raw umber? And just kind of make sure that we still have a little bit of the brown fluffy on either side of this guy. That way they don't get lost. Okay, offloading. Now let's break out some blue. I'm going to rinse real quick just so I don't have any of these other strange colors in there. So grabbing our ultramarine blue. Come on, one drop. It's like I almost had the drop out. <laughs> and then the bottle like sucked it back in. All right, so here we go. It's a beautiful like royal blue, cobalt blue. So ultramarine is one of my faves. If you can't get exactly ultramarine, no big deal. So I'm going to do like a little like almost cap on the baby just in case it was cold out. And a little lump for the body. He's all swaddled up. And then she gets a beautiful blue gown. If I got this all messed up and backwards and, and Mary wears the red dress and the, the blue veil, well, then you can just call that Mary and that Joseph. But I feel like that's Mary and that's Joseph. I'm going to grab a little bit of white. I feel like the blue is very, very dark. And I want to just kind of blend it together. I may darken it up again after I do it, but I just want to kind of pop that blue a little bit more. There you go, pop that blue, just kind of filling it in. So we have a lovely traditional blue gown. And then this guy kind of has the sort of traditional head wrap here. I feel like with that little bit of black poking out that that's kind of like a beard. Might have been accidental, but I'm just gonna go with it and be like, yeah, that was a beard. I accidentally got a black beard in there. Rock on. Okay, and now grabbing a little bit more of just the straight blue. I'm gonna kind of bring in some darker blue along the edge of the veil. Just kind of a little bit of nuance. Not too much nuance, but a little bit of nuance to that gown. So it's kind of multi-toned. So it's a little bit brighter in the belly area and gets a little bit darker as it moves backwards. And I think the baby, I'm going to add a touch of, I'm going to mix some white blue right here. So here, mostly blue, a little bit of white. I just want it to, to 
brighten up just a pinch. See the difference there? That just feels so much darker, and this one's a little bit lighter. I'm going to use a slightly lighter one to go over the baby's outfit or swaddling. It's a small amount, but it's just going to bounce a little bit more light back at you versus suck that light in and absorb it. All right. It's good with the blues now. We got the blues. Go ahead and rinse, offload all the things, get rid of that cut. Oh, geez. Bumping all the things. Okay. Is it gold time already? No way. I think it is. Oh, no, wait. Let's fix that. Let's fix the, the veil. I want a light, a light red. So a little white, a little red. I'm just going to pick a spot on my my palette and mix it. And I don't need much, just enough to kind of lighten that red around her head. There we go. So it still looks red. All right. And this guy, I wanted it to be a little bit rustier. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that sienna color, the raw sienna, and mix it in with my light red. Uh, maybe a little bit more red to it. Let's see how that does. Yeah. So adding some of that in, it's not quite where I wanted it. So I'm going to grab, I'm just going to mix like right here, add a little bit of yellow to kind of warm it up. Again, I'm looking for a rust color. I guess orange is close enough. Oh, and Cassie says she got her wood snowman and stacked pumpkin cut out. I'm so glad. I'm hoping that the system actually emailed you, Cassie, so that you knew it was coming and were able to look for it. Hope you have fun with that one. All right, there we go. We got kind of like a rusty, a rusty color. It's sort of rusty. Now it's just, just screaming red. All right, we'll see what happens when it dries. I think that's good enough. But now we have kind of a variation. They, they don't look like they're dead opposite. This is a cooler red and a warmer red. And that's sort of where, what I was aiming for. I want them to kind of look like they go together, but not just be like someone got lazy. All right, let's break out the gold. It is gold time. It is gold time. We will use brown a little bit more in a second, but we're going to do gold first. So, of course, do the best part first. We're going to do a star. So kind of up here, kind of find a center, and then we're just going to draw like a cross, right? Oops, I'm off center. No biggie. I'm just going to kind of make it slightly pointy. But again, when it comes to working this small, lines are probably sufficient for making it look like a star. So just a cross and then an X directly across that cross. Should do the trick. So now we have the star. And of course, because we want to make it like extra awesome, we're going to do little rays that kind of come down and shine upon the family oh no i gotta sneeze just say bless you and then i will like sit here in misery and not be able to maybe oh my gosh nope <sighs> all right it's fine so you notice that we're kind of having them radiate out like kind of in a in a in a in a circle so have some radiating out this way Shining all down on Bethlehem because it is the star of Bethlehem. There we go. I love that. I did a draft that didn't have this star shining like this, and I was like, man, it just what it just it was missing something. So now the star is shining down on them, and it's it's like it's a little shimmery, a little hard to see, but it is there. Now, oh, everybody needs halos. Well, these three do. So I'm going to go kind of old school halo. And I'm going to do just like, again, kind of think I want to say Byzantine. I've been feeling the Byzantine recently. We're going to do just like the big circle. Like I'm talking old school halos. The circle around the head that's like a big glowing thing. I've never done a halo like that before, but I really kind of like the way it looks. Plus, it's super easy. Because all you got to do is a gold circle and then fill it in. 
If you look up, sometimes it will make you go ahead and sneeze. Oh, like if I look up at the ceiling, Cassie? That would have been nice. Now it's, I'm over it. I'll probably sneeze the minute I turn off the, the camera, but like, I, I lost the urge. Somebody was like, told me that if they say bless you before you sneeze, then you like lose it too. And that seems to work. So I just told myself, bless you. Okay, stare at this guy. I'll try that. Because man, it was like, that was a strong urge. Oh, man, I got sneeze so bad. But hey, better that I didn't. So it's like, okay, please don't do anything extra special that needs to be explained while you're fighting the sneeze. Okay, so now we've got basically three gold circles. It's a little hard to see. So we're going to come in and augment that in just a second with some brown just to kind of add a little definition to those. But before we go there, I'm going to add a little bit of gold to the thatched roof, mostly because I can because I like the way it looks. Maybe a little gold to the manger for the baby. Maybe a little bit in here. I don't know if we want any gold in the... Let me do a little gold down here, kind of on the ground. Maybe it's just the like reflecting the, the gorgeous light from the thing. I don't know. Is that all the gold I planned? I'm trying to think. Mm, yeah, pretty much. Again, if you feel like your star needs a little extra something, you can do that. I love this because you could literally take like a huge glop of gold and just kind of plop it in there and then drag it out. And it's like really gooey and pretty. I don't know. Like, I just got to get a little lost in the gold paint. I really like it. Okay. I'm going to rinse and offload. Whoops. Squeeze that extra out. Rinse. And now we're going to come right back to our dark brown, the raw umber, and get the final details in. So a little bit of brown here. In fact, I want to add some water to it because we're going to, I want it to be kind of loose like ink. So I just got enough water on my brush um, to kind of make this a little less sticky, I guess. All right, let's see. I'm going to come in. So first I'm going to do a very tiny outline around the face and then a tiny outline around the halo. Oof. It's almost a little too thin. But again, we're, we're going with tiny details. So let me just get kind of around the halo. And I like the brown because it, it kind of, you know, it kind of goes better with the gold and then around the face, just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. Black would be too harsh, I think. There we go. Okay. So now you can kind of start to see those halos and you can see them overlapping. And here's her lovely face. Should maybe even do a little bit of outline along the back of that. All right, let's get the halo first. So this is not something you're necessarily gonna wanna attempt if you don't have a fine liner or a super fine paint pen. We're working in tiny details. Now, of course you could totally do this like way bigger. Add a little bit like there along the back of the head. And I want to get baby's face just a smidge more. Okay. Woof, there it is. Itty bitty, teeny tiny, adorable little, okay, a camel there wants dark ears, I think. I think that covers it. Oh, well, there you go. We have our away in the manger. So Merry Christmas, and thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been fun, and I can't wait to see yours. And again, I hope you have a wonderful holiday. So hugs and kisses and love and all the good stuff to you and your family. And I'm really, really grateful that you guys are here and hanging with me today. So I will see you next time. Bye, guys. Let's see. Hit the end button. Bye. Merry Christmas.